thunderstorms. Let's start with something you think you know, thunderstorms. Seems harmless, right? Just some rain, maybe a little lightning show for entertainment. Wrong. Thunderstorms are electric executioners, and they kill over 2,000 people worldwide every year. That innocent-looking cloud above you? It's a factory of violence. Inside, warm air slams into cold air at incredible speeds, creating static electricity so powerful it can heat the air to 30,000 degrees Celsius, five times hotter than the surface of the sun. When lightning strikes, it doesn't just hit you, it cooks you from the inside out. The electrical current stops your heart, fries your nervous system, and can literally blow your shoes off your feet. And here's the terrifying part. Lightning can strike you from 10 kilometers away before you even hear thunder. In July 2023, what seemed like a simple thunderstorm in New York City overwhelmed drainage systems and flooded the subway, trapping thousands underground. Flash floods from these harmless storms can sweep away vehicles in minutes, turning city streets into rivers of death. But thunderstorms are just the beginning of this nightmare. If you want to survive what's coming next, you need to understand every one of these atmospheric killers. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, because by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what each storm can do to you and how to stay alive when they come hunting. Hail storms. Now imagine the sky turning into artillery. That's a hailstorm. These aren't just frozen raindrops. They're ice bullets fired from the clouds at over 100 miles per hour. Hailstones form when water droplets get caught in violent updrafts, freezing and growing larger with each trip up and down inside the storm cloud. By the time they fall, they're not just ice, they're weapons. Golf ball-sized hail can shatter car windshields. Baseball-sized hail can kill you instantly. In Argentina, 2018, hailstones nearly eight inches across fell like bombs from the sky. These ice monsters punched holes through metal roofs, killed livestock where they stood, and turned the landscape into a war zone. Imagine rocks the size of grapefruits being hurled at your head from a 10-story building. That's what large hail feels like when it wants you dead. But here's what makes hailstorms truly terrifying. They strike without warning. One moment you're driving under clear skies, the next your windshield explodes and ice chunks are pummeling your car. In minutes, a hailstorm can destroy entire crops, total thousands of vehicles, and turn a peaceful afternoon into a fight for survival. Tornadoes. But if hailstorms are artillery, tornadoes are the finger of God reaching down to erase you from existence. These aren't just spinning winds, they're rotating columns of pure destruction that can reach speeds of over 300 miles per hour. A tornado begins when warm, moist air collides with cool, dry air, creating a rotating updraft called a mesocyclone. As this rotation tightens, it forms a funnel that drops from the sky like a massive drill bit, ready to bore through anything in its path. EF5 tornadoes, the most violent category, don't just destroy buildings, they atomize them. Concrete foundations are ripped from the ground, cars become missiles, entire neighborhoods vanish as if they never existed. On May 20th, 2013, an EF5 tornado struck Moore, Oklahoma. The tornado was 1.3 miles wide, with winds reaching 301 miles per hour. It stayed on the ground for 39 minutes, carving a 17-mile path of absolute destruction. An elementary school was directly hit. 24 people died, including seven children. The tornado was so powerful, it drove pieces of straw through telephone poles like needles through fabric. But here's the most terrifying thing about tornadoes. They hunt. They don't follow straight paths. They weave, they jump. They seem to target the most populated areas. Survivors describe them as alive, malevolent choosing their victims with deliberate cruelty. 
The sound is what haunts people most, not wind, a freight train roar that grows louder and louder until it drowns out your screams. And in that final moment, when the tornado is right on top of you, there's an eerie silence as the eye passes over before the back wall hits with even more fury. Hurricanes. Now we leave the land and enter the domain of the ocean's revenge. Hurricanes, or cyclones, depending on where they hunt you, are nature's most complete killing machines. They don't just bring one type of death, they bring them all. Hurricanes are born over warm ocean waters, feeding on the heat and moisture like massive atmospheric vampires. As they grow, they develop an eye, a deceptive calm center surrounded by an eye wall of pure violence, where winds can exceed 200 miles per hour. But it's not just the wind that kills, it's the water. Storm surge, walls of seawater pushed inland by hurricane force winds, can rise over 20 feet above normal sea level. This isn't a flood, it's a tsunami of salt water that swallows entire coastlines. Hurricane Katrina in 2005 brought a storm surge that overwhelmed New Orleans' levee system, flooding 80% of the city. Over 1,800 people died. Bodies floated in the streets for days. Survivors were trapped on rooftops, surrounded by a toxic soup of flood water, sewage, and chemicals. The storm didn't just destroy buildings, it destroyed lives, families, entire communities. But Katrina was only a Category 3 when it made landfall. Category 5 hurricanes are nature's apocalypse. Hurricane Dorian in 2019 hit the Bahamas with sustained winds of 185 miles per hour. Entire islands were scoured clean. Communities that had existed for generations were erased in hours. The storm surge was so powerful, it moved cars miles inland and stacked them like toys. And here's the nightmare scenario climate scientists warn about. As ocean temperatures rise, we could see the birth of hypercanes, theoretical storms with winds exceeding 500 miles per hour that could punch through the stratosphere and damage the ozone layer itself blizzards. But storms don't need heat to kill. Sometimes they use cold. Blizzards, the white death, are nature's way of turning your entire world into a frozen tomb. A blizzard isn't just heavy snow. It's a combination of three killers. Sustained winds of at least 35 miles per hour, visibility reduced to less than a quarter mile, and temperatures that can freeze exposed skin in minutes. Together, they create whiteout conditions where you can't see your hand in front of your face. The blizzard of 1888 buried the northeastern United States under up to 50 inches of snow. Winds reached 80 miles per hour. Temperatures dropped to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Over 400 people died, many of them frozen solid just feet from their own front doors. The storm was so powerful, it created snow drifts 50 feet high that didn't melt until July. But it's not just the cold that kills in a blizzard, it's the isolation. When the power goes out, when the roads become impassable, when rescue services can't reach you, you're trapped in a frozen wasteland with no way out. Hypothermia sets in within hours. Your body temperature drops, your thinking becomes confused, and eventually you just stop. In February 2021, Winter Storm Uri brought blizzard conditions to Texas, a state completely unprepared for such weather. The power grid collapsed. 4.5 million homes lost electricity. At least 246 people died, most from hypothermia or carbon monoxide poisoning from desperate attempts to stay warm. Pipes burst, flooding homes with water that immediately froze. Hospitals shut down. The state was paralyzed for a week. Snowstorms. But you don't need hurricane force winds for snow to kill you. Regular snowstorms, the silent killers, murder people with quiet efficiency, one flake at a time. 
Heavy snowfall can collapse roofs, trapping families inside their own homes. Just 12 inches of wet snow can add 38 pounds per square foot to a roof structure. When that weight becomes too much, the roof doesn't just leak, it pancakes, crushing everything underneath. But the real killer is what happens after the snow stops falling. Ice dams form on roofs, causing water to back up and flood homes. Carbon monoxide from blocked exhaust vents kills families in their sleep. Heart attacks spike as people shovel heavy snow. Their cardiovascular systems overwhelmed by the sudden exertion in freezing temperatures. The Great Blizzard of 1993, the storm of the century, dropped snow from Canada to Cuba. Some areas received over 50 inches. The storm killed 318 people across the eastern United States. But most didn't die during the storm itself. They died in the aftermath, from heart attacks while shoveling, from carbon monoxide poisoning, from hypothermia when their heating systems failed. But here's the most terrifying truth about all these storms. They're getting worse. Climate change isn't just making weather more extreme. It's making it more unpredictable. Storms are intensifying faster, lasting longer, and striking in places that have never seen them before. We're seeing thousand-year storms every few years now. Hurricanes that explode from tropical depressions to Category 5 monsters in less than 24 hours. Tornadoes in areas that were previously safe. Blizzards in regions that rarely see snow. The atmosphere is becoming more violent, more chaotic, more deadly. And we're running out of places to hide. Every year, these storms kill thousands and displace millions. They turn cities into graveyards and survivors into refugees. They remind us that for all our technology, all our warnings and preparations, we are still at the mercy of forces that dwarf our understanding. From the electric executioner of thunderstorms to the white death of blizzards, we've journeyed through nature's arsenal of atmospheric weapons each one perfectly designed to end human life, each one a reminder that we live at the mercy of forces beyond our control.